Hey everyone, this is Chris Garin and welcome to Brand Origins where we talk about the world's most valuable brands. This is a special episode because it's about one of the most hated brands in the Philippines, PLDT, which stands for Philippine Long Distance Telephone, and it's the oldest and largest telecom company in the Philippines. If Manila is the financial heart of the Philippines, then PLDT is the of the Philippines. It's where all the sh** comes from. And this one's quite personal. In fact, if you're Filipino, I'm sure you have your own PLDT horror story. It's actually more surprising if you haven't had a bad experience with PLDT. Wait, so you don't have any hate towards PLDT? Are you sure you're Filipino? Like, if you happen to find yourself in a situation where you have no choice but to do small talk with someone, just say something like, ugh. PLDT. And boom, there you go. You now have two hours worth of a convo right there. Because there are only two things that every single Filipino around the world have in common. We all agree that a meal without rice isn't really a proper meal. And all Filipinos, regardless of religion, regardless of our political beliefs, all of us are united by our hate towards PLDT. Those f now, if it isn't obvious enough yet, there's gonna be a lot of hate towards PLDT in this episode. I'm gonna talk about the history of PLDT and why it's the worst brand in the Philippines. PLDT started out back in November 28, 1928. The Philippines at this point was still under American colonial rule. We had our own government running things, but we were still in the process of gaining full independence from the United States. During this period, there had yet to be a way to communicate with someone via a telephone unless it is with a certain radius. So you can basically only call someone via telephone if that person is within the city. Think of it like a LAN party instead of an online multiplayer over the internet. So yeah, in short, it was a mess. And everyone was pretty disconnected. You can't really communicate with someone who's from a neighboring town. And of course, Filipinos were disconnected from the rest of the world. The government decided that it was probably time to fix this problem, and just like a hero coming down from the heavens to save humanity, PLDT was established to bring Filipinos together. The government gave PLDT a 50-year charter, and it will be operated by an American company called GTE. This was the business that GTE was in. It entered countries like the Dominican Republic, British Columbia, and the Philippines. And what they would do is that they would start buying smaller telephone companies and consolidate them in order to form a wider and more connected network. A year after PLDT launched, they were able to connect Manila and Baguio, and thus making the first long-distance calls possible. By the end of the 1930s, the country was more or less now connected, and calls can be made even abroad. But then, World War II happened, and by the end of the war, all of PLDT's hard work were pretty much destroyed. It would take PLDT around 8 years to fully recover from the devastation of the war. Fast forward to 1968, PLDT enters a new era. Before this, PLDT was owned by GTE, and so it was run by Americans. But in 1968, Ramon Coanco, along with a couple investors, took over. They were able to acquire a majority stake in PLDT, giving them full control. The company then started to grow even further, expanding all throughout the country. And when the Philippines was under the infamous dictator Ferdinand Marcos, which was a period when the government was freely taking control of big companies that would support its interests, PLDT was nationalized. And so the company became a monopoly. And during this period, there was very little growth since it was a monopoly and there was no fear of losing customers since customers had no other options anyway. And funny how this one article described how customers that time were experiencing horrible customer service. And I'm like, oh, okay, just like today the then. PLDT's own website shares how people needed to wait for years until their phone line would be installed. And they're kind of framing it as if it's the fault of the government that they have the service. But then once Ferdinand Marcos was gone, here we are, still with service. There's this one guy on Reddit complaining about he's been waiting for two weeks and PLDT has yet to install his connection. And everyone's like, wait, you've been waiting two weeks and you're already complaining? Maybe PLDT's not for you, bro. Okay, so going back. So when Ferdinand Marcos was overthrown, PLDT was once again in the control of the Coancos. And by 1995, the Telecommunications Act was passed, pushing for PLDT's monopoly to be broken. And I'm guessing that this has something to do with the other big telco player in the Philippines, Globe Mackay. 
Globe McKay merged in 1992 and thus gave birth to the present-day Globe Telecom. If you want to learn more about Globe, I talk about it in the Ayala Corporation episode, so check that one out. Globe and PLDT both still currently are the two biggest telco players in the Philippines, and Globe is owned by the very wealthy and powerful Ayala family. But PLDT wasn't about to go down without a powerful backer of its own. In 1998, this is where Manny V. Pangilinan first enters the picture. Manny V. Pangilinan, or MVP for short, is the co-founder of First Pacific. MVP is an important figure in PLDT's history. Okay, so just a bit of a background on MVP, he graduated cum laude from Ateneo de Manila University, major in economics. He then won a competition sponsored by PNG, and the prize was a scholarship to Wharton. He went back to the Philippines for a bit, then moved to Hong Kong to work in international finance. He even worked for American Express as an investment banker. And in 1981, MVP co-founded First Pacific, an investment corporation. First Pacific's investment unit in the Philippines is called Metro Pacific. Metro Pacific, of course, is a huge company with stakes in major utility companies in the Philippines, such as Meralco, Maynilad Water, and they also have a stake in mining, healthcare, and tollways. First Pacific acquired a 17.5% controlling stake in PLDT for around 29.7 billion pesos, putting MVP at the helm. Two years later, PLDT acquired Smart Communications via a share swap deal which put Smart under PLDT as a subsidiary. This was an incredibly good decision for PLDT, foreseeing the transition of people from using telephones to mobile phones. And Smart was then the country's largest mobile phone operator. Okay, so with this in mind, with all these assets and advantages, there is absolutely no question how capable PLDT is in giving its customers the best possible customer experience. But then, my foreign friends, we have to establish from this point forward that happy customers and PLDT can never be put in one sentence, ever. Unless the sentence is PLDT makes sure customers are never happy. Because despite them using the Twitter handle PLDT cares, PLDT does not give a about their customers. And did you know that the first time a Filipino baby hears the word PLDT, their first gray hair grows out. It's just how the Filipino body prepares the baby for the frustration the baby is about to face when it starts dealing with PLDT's shitty service. Okay, so here's the problem with PLDT. Even though the Philippines is ranked 109th in the world in terms of speed with an average download and upload speed of 27 Mbps, I'm not here to complain about that because quite honestly, I'm quite content with my 7 Mbps speed. That's why I'm weirded out when I see people with speeds of up to 50 Mbps complain about their speed. The speed isn't what pisses many of us off, it's the customer service. In 4 years, my experience with PLDT has been smooth and everything was perfect, until it wasn't. It only took one rainy night. I'm guessing that the cable on one telephone post got damaged and my internet connection went from 7 down to 0.50. So I called customer service the following day to report this. And when you call PLDT, you have to expect that you'll be spending at least 2 hours just waiting for your turn to get accommodated. So after 3 hours of waiting, they told me that they're gonna be sending someone soon. After waiting for 7 days, the repair guys finally arrive. I'm mad cause it took too long, but at the same time, I'm happy cause finally they're here, they can finally fix it. So the repair guy comes in and he checks out the cables and the router, and then he looks at me and tells me that he, I may have to wait a bit cause he'll be sending someone else here to fix this. And I'm like, what? He didn't have to say it, but obviously it seemed like he didn't know how to fix it. So I'm like, what is this for real? So are you telling me that I have to wait again? But of course, being a customer of PLDT, you have to understand that when things like this happen, there is absolutely nothing you can do about it but to go through the process. And so I wait. A week passes and no one comes. I had no choice but to call again. And so I spent another two hours calling PLDT to request them to send someone else. It takes another 7 days for the repair guys to come here, but then they finally were able to fix it. The entire process took around 3 weeks, and during that entire period, I had to pay for my bill, even though it wasn't my fault that they had faulty wires. And that is the magic of PLDT. And I'm not alone either, because a quick search on Twitter and Reddit will give you so many PLDT horror stories. But then, take note that this only happens if you're not a celebrity. 
Of course, I'm referring to the Liza Soberano incident. So there's this actress here in the Philippines, Liza Soberano, and she's very beautiful and very popular. So one time, Liza tweets to her 4.3 million followers about how shitty her internet connection is. Her internet service provider was Converge, one of PLDT's competitors. So she tweets about how she's an unhappy customer and how she's unable to contact their customer support. Two days later, apparently, Liza's problems were solved. Because you know who came to the rescue? PLDT. Apparently, PLDT came to her house and hooked her up with a 300 Mbps internet connection. Liza, of course, was very happy about this, but everyone else was furious because holy <laughs> two days? Remember, never have I ever experienced having my internet installed in less than a month. But then, because this one involves Miss Popular Liza Sobrano, you guys can apparently finish it in two days? Unsurprisingly, after this, the meme started coming in. And every time people had complaints to BLDT, they started tagging Liza. <laughs> Like there were tweets that said stuff like, Liza, please complain to PLDT for me. There's this one tweet from Gladilyn M which said, I am not famous and beautiful like Liza Sobrano, but I think my money's as good as hers. And I understand her frustration. Because here's the thing, the reason why Filipinos are furious is not because PLDT makes mistakes. Hell, the biggest and best brands in the world make mistakes. It's not about making mistakes, it's about how they make amends for those mistakes. Because like I said, during the 3-4 to four week period when my internet was down, while I was waiting for it to be repaired, I still got charged for it. I still needed to pay my monthly bill. But the moment you miss just a single day of your payment due date, just this one single day, and your internet is instantly cut off. Just like that. If PLDT needs to undergo maintenance and needs to fix their systems, the most those f***ers do is to publish a post on Facebook apologizing for the inconvenience. Honestly though, if PLDT simply reimbursed customers for their shortcomings, I swear, they could turn all this hatred around and turn all of us into superfans. But there's just this complete disregard towards the feelings of their customers, and PLDT seems to be striving to simply do the bare minimum. Another example is the number of offices they have. So I live in Iloilo City, Philippines, and I think we have a population of around 500 to 600,000 residents here. And you know how many offices PLDT has to cater to all those people? There's only one. One single branch. So if you need to process a complaint, submit an application, or if you have any issues with billing, I'm sorry guys, because you're gonna have to clear out your day because you're gonna be spending the entire day waiting in line in that one office. If only there was another way to send or receive files via the internet. And we did actually ask them, can we just send this application via email? And the manager was a bit hesitant and he said that although you can send it via email, he recommends that you head back to the office, line up, and submit it physically. He was kind of implying that, yeah, no one's gonna read that email. What baffles me is that PLDT can afford to improve their customer service. In Q1 2020, they hit a net income of 12.3 billion pesos. And that's in a single quarter. They even have the audacity to use the tagline, PLDT, changing lives. Ah, yes, the number of lives PLDT has changed from happy to depressed. But okay, anyway, PLDT has a couple more acquisitions, so let's get back to that one. You guys remember Netopia? The internet cafe brand that used to be everywhere. Yeah, well, at its peak, PLDT acquired them back in 2001 for 24 million pesos. But in 2010, PLDT sold their stake in Netopia, and now that brand is nowhere to be found. One big acquisition that PLDT made was when they acquired Sun Cellular, the third biggest wireless communications provider in the country. I had no idea that Sun Cellular was actually owned by the Gokongways. Apparently, because of the share swap deal, JG Summit was able to get a 12% share in PLDT. Sun Cellular was then run alongside Smart, but was recently being slowly merged under the Smart brand. If you didn't know, PLDT also has a stake in a diverse set of companies under MediaQuest, one of their holding companies. Through MediaQuest, PLDT owns Signal TV, their satellite television provider brand. TV5, their TV station, is also under MediaQuest. And did you know that TV5 wasn't necessarily their first choice in terms of which TV station they wanted to acquire? Because since 2001, PLDT has already been attempting to acquire GMA Network, one of the two giant entertainment groups in the country. 
they were on the verge of acquiring GMA, and they've already agreed on the 8.5 billion price tag. But then creditors denied this because of concerns as to PLDT's existing loans. They then made another attempt, this time by using smart communications, but then that one failed too because of what's stated in the constitution where mass media companies have to be 100% Filipino owned. Seven years later, they made another attempt but then at that point, PLDT already owned their own TV network in TV5. The two still continue to discuss possibilities of a deal happening, but so far, nothing has gone beyond that. In 2013, MediaQuest acquired Hasting Holdings, which owns 70% of the newspaper Business World and has an 18% stake in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, a major national newspaper. Perhaps one of PLDT's most promising subsidiaries is Voyager Innovations. Voyager is the first company from the Philippines that's backed by one of the biggest investment groups in the world, the Chinese company Tencent. They have a 48% stake in Voyager, with plans to unload more of that in order to get further funding. Voyager's focus is kind of PLDT's tech arm. Its focus is on digital and financial services. Under Voyager is Smart Padala, the mobile-based remittance network in the Philippines. They also own Lender, a digital platform. Most importantly, PayMaya, a mobile wallet app where you can pay bills and send and receive money. This is Smart's answer to Gcash, which is under Globe. And that's pretty much it. There's no doubt about the fact that PLDT is a massive company, but the fact that they are able to make these sizable investments makes it perfectly clear that the reason why their customers continue to have horrific experiences with the company, it isn't because of a lack of funds. It's because they simply don't think that it's worth it to put any effort into improving it at all. Their tagline says that it's changing lives, but it seems like the one that needs to change the most is PLDT itself. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. We have more episodes on our podcast. Just search for Brand Origins on any podcast app. This episode is made possible by Ask Zeus. For only $99, they'll give you honest and actionable feedback for your brand.